Which one sparks joy? Choose your destiny. Hi everyone. Got another video here for uh, basics of mini identification. This is about distributors, specifically the standard Lucas types that were common on these cars. Now I know there's a couple ones that I'm missing from this lineup, but I'll go ahead and describe it nonetheless. Sorry on the left we've got the oldest and all the way to the right we've got the newest. So the ones in this group here, these are all A series and that one's a uh, A plus style. And for starters, the, the clamping area here, you'll notice this, this area here is where the clamp attaches. As you can see on this one, here's the clamp. The, uh, the A plus style again has that forked type mount which goes over, over this, this ring here. But yeah, if you've got an early car, it's probably got one of these points uh, style 25D distributors. It has, this is an early one where the threaded vacuum module and the uh, fine adjustable control for the, uh, the advanced timing. Now this is a side exit cap 25D distributor and it is um, still just you know, points set up, but this still has solid core wires. Yeah, this is a really old one. Um, pretty standard stuff in here. Set of points, uh, contacts there, capacitors here. So yeah, pretty pretty much standard fare for a, an early mini. Also notice the uh, style of rotor. It's got this longer tail. The 25D tends to have more vacuum advance uh, motion than the later ignition systems have, which I'm going to show you in that distributor there. But yeah, this is this is pretty much standard early 25D. Also notice that there's no O-ring on this one. Um, let's see, date stamp on this is 64. I don't remember when they started adding the sealing O-ring into it, but yeah, it's pretty common for an early Mark One. Then the factory moved into this design with the, the ceiling o-ring here, a push-on style vacuum module. They switched to a top end exit cap and still retained the you know fine adjustable knob here for vacuum control or vacuum advance adjustment. Um, this particular unit has had a magnetic replacement for its uh, points. So pretty common stuff. After this design, they then moved on to what would be described as a 45D. You'll notice that this design does not have the knob for controlling vacuum advance. It's also, it doesn't have the same uh, large plastic, in this case rubber, uh, wiring connection here. This one, it's, it's Lucas's attempt to sort of improve the weather sealing of their distributors. So. They went with a different cap design. Notice, you know, here's the 25, here's the 45D. Different cap design. Uh, the rotor got narrower because these vacuum modules tend to have less vacuum advance than the 25Ds, so they didn't need as much rota rotational um, control here with the spark. But yeah, so this is a typical 45D. Uh, just has one small hole for the, uh, the wiring to pass through. And um, worked out pretty well. Here's the uh, here's the contact breaker plate for that distributor. Here's the one wire. So again, pretty common for a lot of cars. And until they came up with the uh, A plus motor, they had to come up with a different body design because again, the A plus motor uses the clamp. So yeah, 2545 for the A series, and then. Once they came up with the A-plus motor, they came up with the 59D. Now, the 59D and the 45D are basically the same, except that they changed the clamp. And you can find them in points versions and, and you know, electronic versions. But um, the last of the production was the 65D seen here. And these are easy to identify because they have this module attached to the side along with a wiring harness that comes out of it. Now this is an early one, so it still uses the two wire connector. Uh, later modules actually have three wires. 
or a three wire connector, even though they're only using two of them. But yeah, these are very, very robust modules and last for many, many, many years. So that's kind of a basic how to identify what the ignition system is in your car. Um, I'll go ahead and discuss uh, coils and wires and all that stuff later, but just wanted to give you just a slight overview of what you're typically going to see in your Mini and how to kind of identify what, what you've got. If you guys thought that video was interesting or helpful, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys in another video.